few days old at sea, a pirate, a pirate, a very warlike appointment gave us chase. Finding ourselves too slow of sail, we put on a compelled valor and in the grapple I boarded them. On the instant they got clear of our ship, so I alone became their prisoner. They have dealt with me like thieves of mercy, but they knew what they did. I am to do a good turn for them. Well, the king hath the letters I have sent, and repair thou to me with as much haste as thou wouldst fly dead. I have words to speak in thine ear will make thee dumb, yet are much too light for the board matter. <coughs> Rosencrantz and Guildenstern hold their course for England. Of them I have much to tell thee. Farewell. He that thou knowest thine, Hamlet. And now must your conscience my acquittance seal. And you must put me in your heart for friend, since you have heard, and with a knowing ear, that he that hath your noble mother slain pursued my life. Well appears. Tell me, why you proceeded not against these feats, so crimeful and so capital in offense, as by your safety, wisdom, all things else you mainly were stirred up? Oh, for two special reasons, which may to you perhaps seem much unsinued, but yet to me they are strong. The queen, his mother, lives almost by his looks. And for myself, my virtue or my plague, be it either which, she's so conjunctive to my life and soul that as the star moves not but in his sphere, I could not but by her. The other motive, why to a public account I might not go, is the great love the general gender bear him, who, dipping all his faults in their affections, would like the spring that turneth wood to stone, convert his jives to graces, so that my arrows, too slightly tempered for so loud a wind, would have reverted to my bow again and not where I had aimed them. And so, have I a noble mother lost, a sister driven into desperate terms, whose worth, if praises may go back, a gun stood challenger on mount of all the age for her perfection. But my revenge will come. Break not your sleeps for that. You must not think that we are made of stuff so flat and dull that we can let our beard be shook with danger and think it pastime. You shortly shall hear more. I loved your mother. And we love ourselves. Ah. And that, I hope, will teach you to amend. How now? What news? Letters, my lord, from Hamlet. This to your majesty, this to the queen. From Hamlet? Who, who brought them? Sailors, my lord. They say I saw them not. Good Laertes, you shall hear. Leave us. I and mighty. You shall know I am set naked on your kingdom. Tomorrow shall I beg leave to see your kingly eyes, when I shall first, asking your pardon thereunto, recount the occasions of my sudden and more strange return, Hamlet. What should this mean? Are all the rest come back, or is it some abuse and no such thing? Know ye the hand. Tis Hamlet's character. Naked. And in the postscript here he says, alone. Can you advise me? I am lost in it. But let him come. It warms a very sickness in my heart that I should live to tell him to his teeth, Thus didst thou! If it be so, good Laertes, as how should it be so? How otherwise will you be ruled by me? I, my lord. So you will not overrule me to a peace? To thine own peace. If he be now returned, as checking at his voyage, and that he no more means to undertake it, I will work him to exploit, now ripen my device, under the which he shall not choose but fall. And for his death, no wind of blame shall breathe, but even his mother shall uncharge the practice and call it accident. My lord, I will be ruled. The rather if you could devise it so that I might be the organ. Laertes, was your mother dear to you? Or are you like the painting of a sorrow, a face without a heart? Why ask you this? Not that I think you did not love your mother, but that I know love is begun by time, and that I see in passages of proof, 
time qualifies the spark and fire of it. Hamlet comes back. What would you undertake to show yourself your mother's son indeed more than in words? To cut his throat in the church. No place indeed should murder sanctuaries. Revenge should have no bounds. But good Laertes, will you do this? Keep close within your chamber. Hamlet returned, shall know you are come home. We'll put on those shall praise your excellence and set a double varnish on that fame you have in fencing. Bring you in fine together, make wager on your heads. He being remiss, most generous and free from all contriving will not peruse the foils. So that with ease or with a little shuffling, you may choose a sword unbated and in a passive practice requite him for your mother. I will do it. For that purpose, I'll anoint my sword. I, I bought an unction of a mountebank so mortal that the knife in it where it draws blood, no cataplasm so rare collected from all simples that have virtue under the moon can save the thing from death. This is but scratched with all. I'll touch my point with this contagion, that if I go him slightly, it may be death. Let's further think of this. Weigh what convenience both of time and means may fit us to our shape. If this should fail, and that our drift look through our bad performance to a better not a save, therefore this project should have a back or second that might hold a fisted blast in proof. Soft, let me see. We'll make a solemn wager on your cunnings. I have to. When in your motion you are hot and dry, as make your bouts more violent to that end, and that he calls for drink, I'll have prepared him a chalice for the nonce, whereon but sipping, if he by chance escape your venomed stuck, our purpose may hold there. I am made at your window, be your valentine. How now, sweet queen? When woe doth tread upon another's heels, so fast they follow. Your sister's drowned, Laertes. Drowned? Where? Th there is a willow. It grows aslant a brook. It shows his hoar weeds in the glassy stream. There with fantastic Garlands did she come of crow flowers, nettles, daisies, and uh, long purples. There upon the pendant boughs her coronet weeds clambering to hang, and envious sliver broke. But when down she and her weedy trophies fell into the weeping brook. But her clothes spread wide, and, and for a while mermaid-like they bore her up at which time she chanted snatches of old tunes, as one incapable of her own distress, or like a creature, native and imbued unto that element. But long it could not be, till that her garments, heavy with their drink, pulled the poor wretch down from her melodious lay and did to muddy death. Too much? Of water hast thou, poor Ophelia? And therefore I forbid my tears. <clears throat> but yet it is our trick. Nature, her custom holds. Let shape say what it will. When these are gone, the woman will be out. Adieu, my lord. I have a speech of fire that fain would blaze, but that this folly doubts it. Let's follow Gertrude. How much I had to do to calm his rage. Now fear I this will give it start again. Therefore, let's follow. <laughs> 